Hey now everybody, I'm Jason Acorn, this is Calvin Buckler, and welcome to the best of, and worst of, season two of The Boneyard. Yeah! Brought to you by Filming season two of the Boneyard definitely had its ups and a lot of downs. And slowly our skin gets thicker. I edit the show and there's times when I'm watching footage and I look at it and I think like, wow, you know, that was amazing. And then there's other times when I you know, stare at it and I scream because I just think, how did you miss that? You know, where, like, what happened? And that's like episode one. Yeah, I was pretty devastated on my mule deer hunt. No blame to the cameraman. It's tough hunting with or without a cameraman. Things happen. It's sort of like you cutting me off on your bear hunt when you're in the blind. I'm on the phone. I'm like wanting to be a part of it and you just click. You know, because I didn't have a cameraman, I got no one to blame. But if I would have had a cameraman, I would have blamed him. Okay, Calvin, why aren't you shooting and why, 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 why did you turn the phone off? I could have been a part of it. I could have heard everything. Well, that was a really good shot on that bear. I know how it is having a bear in that close. Yeah, it was, uh, it was amazing. I actually cut his elbow here and come in through the heart out the other side, you know, I pinned him, it was perfect. It was kind of like uh, Ty Cote's shot on that bear, man. He just, boom, dead. Yeah, and I think the best thing about that was his reaction after, that laugh. You, you don't know if he was gonna laugh or cry, but that laugh was just pure adrenaline, excitement, happy fun. Yeah, <laughs> and then when he fumbles the shell, <laughs> that was classic. You, you know, he was jacked right up to the maximum. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. <laughs> that oh oh yeah just beautiful it's got got a little scar on his nose he's a nice looking bear nice big head on him we're back <laughs> Said, I think the bull's over here. So we just coax him. 
him in a little bit. He come right back and smoked him right here. He's done. He's in the freezer, baby. Grandma needs a new set of snow tires. <laughs> Lee's about six foot four, 230 pounds, and when I uh, got him to come over and watch that episode, I made sure I was in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> flying solo that night, deer walks out right in front of me. I swung the camera, they bolt, grunted a few times to get him to stop. They stopped, or they slowed down, swung the camera again, was not on the deer, grunted some more, they finally stopped, got it centered on him, just moving my rifle over, and he bolts into the trees, and another opportunity lost. Fail. 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 Oh, yeah. Failure. Loser. Loser. Oh, that's a mean one. <laughs> <laughs> I need to leave with the boneyard. We are uh, the last day of the season. It's been a very frustrating couple weeks now. Seeing that big buck and not being able to get him. And now I have no idea where he's gone. And a lot of my spots are getting shot up and pushed around. And I'm so lonesome I could cry. And now we're on to episode four and you're hunting whitetail. The funniest part in that episode, Kelvin, was when you were up in the tree mm -hmm. and you had that camo face mask on. <laughs> Me and my girls laughed so hard, it was uncontrollable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was whatever. I was trying. <laughs> you were, but you adjusted it. You noticed it. That's what was so funny. <laughs> My only chance. I look pretty styling with that hat on. But... Now, even though you didn't get a deer that day, that owl footage was absolutely sublime and one of a million chance. All right, here is my Alberta whitetail. I've been hunting as hard as I could, and you know, it's just, it worked out perfect. He was out in the middle of the field. I seen him kind of in the dark. I seen he had a big body, so I went up the tree line, kept moving down, they stayed out there, then finally he started coming towards the trees, and then I, took my shot. Right there, Cal, was a mature Alberta whitetail. Yeah, and I think that's one of the hardest things to get on film. You know, you have guys say, I've got 20 shooter bucks, yeah, on your trail camera in the dark. You know, <laughs> like, try and get one within 100 yards of you in good light. Like, they're just, those big bucks go nocturnal, and they are difficult to film. They are. The Boneyard. <laughs> we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Boneyard. Brooklyn reloads again, and... You got him. Well, this is the outcome of our, our hunt. We had a good feeling today, and uh, both of us were pretty excited to come out. Yeah. We were eager to get out of the house today. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is Brooke's first buck. And it's an impressive one at that. Um, I already told her that we're going to be putting them on the wall. Can you believe the luck when a girl, 13 years old, takes a buck of that magnitude? Yeah, it's like I've been hunting my whole life and I've never taken a buck like that. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I guess luck is when preparation meets opportunity. And she did make that 160 yard shot and it was a perfect one, hard shot, you know, so kudos to Brooke. Awesome. Yeah. The rut, you just never know. 
I start crying, but uh, I don't do that. This is the boneyard. <laughs> the buck ended up scoring 166 and 3 8 inches. All right, so next up is Jason Saskatchewan whitetail episode, and I think the zone you got to draw in was you could only hunt the last five days in November. You are correct. Check this out. <laughs> I think we just added some bones to the boneyard, buddy. So I ended up getting to cook one of those back straps on the barbecue from that Saskatchewan whitetail, and I have to tell you, it tastes the same. <laughs> Before we cut the break, we're gonna slip in Josiah Pilon, the winner of the Boneyard Bear Hunt. Oh yes. Oh. We have a winner! The Boneyard will be right back. We're back. Shiny Mud Cup 49. I'm Barry. This is my son Victor, 13 years old, taking him out on his uh, first hunt ever. Now we're on to the next episode, Calvin and I's double header. Snuck up and got her done. Yeah! Hey now everybody, Calvin and I, we got her done. Calvin, I think about a half an hour before last light, November 30th, and myself probably 10 minutes, five minutes before last light. So we filled our tags. We have a story to tell, and uh, we couldn't be happier. Well, that's a wrap. Season two's in the bag. I think the most gratifying part of season two was taking out all these young kids and getting them their very first big game animal. First off, we had 
16 year old Ty Cote, who shoots his first black bear, mm -hmm. 13 year old Brooklyn Chopko, a stud of a whitetail, her very first big game animal. Then there's Josiah Pilong, you know, where he won the shoot at the mother of all shoots and then, you know, makes a nice shot on that bear. 16 that was, years old. Yeah, beautiful. And then uh, Victor Titus. Victor. Know, 13 years old. And man, oh man, when I watched that, I was just like, holy. <laughs> yeah, remarkable. Yeah, awesome. I'd like to take this opportunity to give our special thanks to our family, friends, sponsors, all the hunters out there, and especially our fans. Yeah, we, we, uh, we're happy people are watching. You know, we're trying hard to make it interesting and funny, obviously, you know, because that's what people do in the field. You know, I think uh, we don't take ourselves too seriously, for sure, but we definitely take our hunting real serious, you know. So thanks for watching. Thanks, everybody. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace on Earth starts at home, people. So I'm ca I'm hacking on people. I don't know. Calling yeah. them losers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are, are